From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai. Over the next few months, a selection of Nissan's youngest racing drivers will be training for one of the world's toughest endurance races, the Dubai 24 Hours. We'll follow their highs and their lows as they attempt to make the grade in the world of professional motorsport. But unlike your average racing driver, there's one thing that makes these guys unique. They've all learned their craft on a PlayStation. This is Road to Dubai. Since 2008, GT Academy has been turning PlayStation gamers into racing drivers. We take the world's top Gran Turismo racers and select the quickest, most promising driver. The programme's already produced three pro racing drivers in the last four years. It was a fantastic prize and, you, you know, the opportunity of my life to, to become a racing driver. 15 months ago, I was, I, I've never stepped into a race car, never been to a racetrack before. Really amazing, and sometimes I still can't believe it. In 2013, more names were added to the list of winners. European GT Academy winner, Wolfgang Now Wright. that I reach a little part of my dream, I just want to keep pushing and achieve bigger goals and bigger dreams. Russian GT Academy winner, Mark Szulczycki. For me, it's one chance, only this chance, and I want to take it. And German GT Academy winner, Peter Pizzera. The whole experience in GT Academy was very fantastic. For me, it's like uh, they put me out of my normal life and throw me into a dream. Will they succeed as Lucas, Jordan and Jan have done? Can they make it to the Dubai 24 hours? The 2012 GT Academy winners, Wolfgang Wright, Mark Szulczycki and Peter Pizzera have started their journey into the world of professional motor racing and they're quickly finding out that there are lots of elements they need to improve on. For the boys, the main goal is to obtain an international C license and to get it, they need 12 signatures that they earn by competing in and finishing races. All the hard work they're putting in now is for one reason, to be able to race in the Dubai 24 hours. To do this, they'll need not only their international licenses, but they will need to show RJM team principal Bob Neville, who's worked with all the previous GT Academy winners, that they have what it takes to compete in one of the toughest endurance races in the world and to be competent enough to take their seat alongside previous GT Academy winner and now experienced endurance racer Lucas Ordonier. Yeah, there's uh, so many different characteristics uh, of racing in, in Dubai 24 hours than uh, in UK. First of all, you have to be really fit. Uh, it's really hot weather or hot conditions, so you, you will be more than 60 degrees inside the, the cabin in, in the car. Also, the track is really challenging, no? Uh, lots of traffic, so you have to get used to uh, the, the car quite quickly. The best advice I can tell them is, you know, to, to listen to everyone around GT Academy. It's not just being a GT Academy winner and you are a racing driver, no. If, if you are not good enough, uh, you can be out of the program. So they have to show everyone around GT Academy that you are giving everything to, to become a racing driver. Obviously, there will, there will be highs and lows uh, during the driver development because it's a big change in your life. You will be living far from your family, so, so you have to be, you know, uh, really prepared for that. That's the best advice I can give to them, and that's what I did, no? To be able to learn their craft, Wolfgang, Mark and Peter have moved from their homes in Brussels, Vladivostok and Germany and live together in Silverstone. Their lives are changing in every way. The best thing is that we are together like it. <laughs> Can you get out please here when I make my movie? Wolfie is the most person like me. 
he's uh, the nearest country of me and um, you can feel it. It's, we are very similar at a few things. We are, he's very friendly. Hopefully very friendly guy. Sometimes he crazy in racing, but in real life he good. Living with Mark is very fun and cool because Russian, when they talk, you always have the impression that they are angry. And you have to understand that because sometimes you're there, he's angry against me or what? But no. So it's cool, it's cool. Peter, very, very funny time spent with him. It's good, I, ha I have Wolf and I have Peter, they sometimes uh, help me to cook. I'm not good in cooking, yeah, for me it's very hard. It's a great experience to live uh, with all different cultures. You know, uh, Russia is very different. It's very cool, really. It's very interesting to live with other guys because I never live alone. In my city I have a small apartment, very small with one room, one kitchen, one bathroom. And uh, I live with parents. For me the best thing is to live uh, with these guys together is we are like a team. We, you, even when you uh, have a boring day or something you can get downstairs and talk with the other guys so you are not alone. Living with people uh, that are in the same process of, as me, it's, it's very cool because we all know uh, what we had to do to be here. So that gives us uh, some respect, you know, for each other. The best thing to live here is, uh, of course, the race at the weekend or when we are testing oh, it's only five minutes from Silverstone. The best experience is just simply to experience living in another country. Just as simple as that. Now I live like a dream, in a dream, in a sweet dream, I don't know. And when I go home, I think it's over my, over my sweet dream. And for me, it's best, best day. Every, every day, it's best for me to live here live with these guys, drive this car in the UK, it's really good. Good chance. The next challenge awaiting the boys is another race and hopefully another set of signatures for their licenses. So today we are on the Castlecom track. So, uh, very famous and one of the oldest tracks of England. New track, uh, sometimes very hard because you need some, some time on adaptation. We have not this time. I really enjoy the track, but it's very dangerous. So, you are always driving a little bit carefully than on another track because it's fast, very bumpy. If you made a mistake, it's the wall and wall, no signature, no nothing. And a lot of people angry. And helping RGM team principal Bob Neville to keep them out of trouble today is pro driver and driving mentor Christian Van and GT Academy development driver organizer Martin Smith. Very, very intensive this year. We've, we're under pressure to get the racing licenses and all of their training done before Dubai in January. So we're racing pretty much every weekend. We're going through that phase now where they're, they're realizing that they're not just racers, they're coming and they're going to have to become athletes and proper focused racing drivers. Sometimes I think they're exceeding my expectation and then one of them or two of them will do something that will really disappoint me and bring it all back down again. We're not seeing quite the acceleration curve that we're looking for, uh, particularly on the fitness side and the diet side, but that's all part of the mentorship and you know, every race weekend we do, they're learning something new, not necessarily about the racing, but on their approach to their sport. The next four weeks that I think I'll be telling because we still need to see some improvement. So our expectation is for them to be within one second of their more experienced teammates. So again, we've got to push and strive to, to hit that goal. Martin and Christian, yeah, they try to give us the best advice as possible. Sometimes it's a little bit hard, you know. It's for our best, so. 
so the boys have a lot to learn on and off the track, but a change of attitude is needed. The team are worried that one Mark's is not developing not as he should. Very well situation. He's always got an answer for everything. He doesn't accept it. And even when you tell him what he's doing wrong, he won't accept it that it is. Um, and it's really sad to hold him back. Do you think he just needs half, half a day or even a full day just... Well, look, no, he needs to start learning. As in listening? Mm -hmm. He's got to have the opportunity to redeem himself. Yeah, yeah. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt there, for sure. Because there's nothing bad there. I think just needs a bit of shaping up, doesn't it? They have had a couple of tellings off in the last couple of weeks, and we're now waiting to see how they react from, from that motivational uh, speech. So the mentors have their concerns, but it's time to put those aside and let the boys show what they can do on the track. He had a difficult race just then. He, he braked a little bit too hard and locked the front wheel. And when, when you lock the wheels, you, you wear out the rubber in one place. Uh, and then on subsequent laps, when you're braking, it always finds that flat spot, it's called, and it, it got progressively worse. No, the car was horrible, really. Horrible. There's always a bit of an excuse, so oh, it's the car, and we're having to say to him, no, Wolfie, look, you're the man driving it, you're going to have to you know, take responsibility for your actions. Wolfgang doesn't have the best race, but Mark shows his mentors that he is worthy of his place in the development yes, program. My podium and my first second place. <laughs> it's a very hard race, uh, especially last lap. Oil on the road, to another guy spinning. It's very crazy, but I do this. <laughs> yeah, really happy, really. Mark's delighted with his results, and to end a good day of racing, Peter is also successful. Yeah, I've made a second position in the race, and it was a very difficult race, so I'm very happy. It will be a very good night tonight. <laughs> yeah, we must uh, sing like sportsmen, so no drinking, but uh, you can celebrate other ways, so... Yeah, very chilly evening here at Castlecombe, isn't it? And uh, but very successful one for GT Academy. Uh, Mark had a really good race and um, ended up second, which was a bit of a surprise. I think their pace is good. It's not all. It's, it's not all fantastic, but it, it's very good. And, and, and I think, as you say, that they are where we'd expect them to be. They're on their way to the international license. Happy team manager. Good. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. In the last two months, Wolfgang, Mark and Peter have received nine signatures each by marshalling, completing their Association of Racing Drivers School training and competing in races. They're a step closer to gaining their international sea licences and a step closer to finding out who will get the opportunity to drive in the same car as the most experienced GT Academy graduate, Lucas Odinev, in the Dubai 24 Hours. Coming up next on the road to Dubai, the 2008 GT Academy winner Lucas Odenier tests the car that he'll be racing next. Wolfgang, Mark and Peter compete in their first endurance race and in the second GT Academy winner Jordan Tresson hopes for a better race at the next stop of the World Endurance Championship in Bahrain. From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy race to Dubai.